Hey guys, Dave Ray here from DB Restorations. How you doing? Gonna go into part two of our rear disc brake conversion on this 68 Dodge Charger. So you can see I got the, the axle all prepped and everything else and uh, got some grease in there on this inner seal and this is the time to change your inner tube seals uh, so that you don't have to worry about any leaks. So make sure you do that. And I got the gasket on there, a little bit of silicone on there to help seal the uh, axle flange there and the bearing. So I'll show you. I installed the green bearings. We were talking about that in the last uh, video. Here's the new school green bearings I installed on there. Try to get it to, there we go, get a little bit of focus on there. But you can see this one has an O-ring on it. There's your keeper. So when you press these on, you got your flange already on there. It's got this little snap ring on the back. Then your bearing actually has a seal on the inside that kind of goes up on the axle shaft itself and you just press that into location and here's your old school ones of course you got your flange here and then here you got a bearing race and then your bearing underneath and then your keeper so this here's a sealed bearing new school setup which is really cool and so i put some grease on the axle tube uh, to lubricate that o-ring when it goes in there to seal it up and then of course on the back of the axle flange here I got that gasket put some silicone so she'll seal up really good but uh, I got all my parts uh, ready to go in this right here as you can see you got a rotor got our caliper got a couple brackets some spacers and so we're gonna dig right into this I thought I'd tell you on the last episode the last uh, segment I did here part one I had said that on the Willwood style that their parking brake uh, setup was a brake drum assembly on the caliper, and it's not on the caliper. I have to I had to watch a video to figure that out. It's a backing plate that goes on your axle tube that has like a, a brake drum set up on it, and then it works on the inside of the rotor there on the back side, so it would have like a little mini drum brake in there. But I said it was on the rotor, and I didn't really catch what I was saying, so I wanted to correct that and. Uh, let you know that I made a mistake and so now we're moving on. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and get our axle shaft back inside of the rear differential. All right, real quick here, I'm going to show you the axle shaft is in there, but you want to make sure that whenever you have these bearings pressed on, make sure you get your, your flange on there first before the bearing. Uh, because it's got to go up against that little snap ring to hold it into the axle tube now if you do make a mistake which which I did and You can just undo the snap ring and fold it up underneath of this if this is in front of it This will slide all the way off. You could shove the snap ring through the hole Put it on and then get your flange on there. Okay, so that'll go on there just like that And that's what holds that baby on there. All right, so let's get her bolted down Okay, you guys, there I got the axle shaft in there. You can see the flange is up against the axle tube. So now what I'm going to do is I got two brackets here, okay? This is our rear bracket. This is our front bracket. So this bracket here is going to go on next. It's got these four holes you can kind of see shaped around an axle tube. So you just stick that right over there like that. Let me get up here where you can see. And that baby is going to go on just like that, okay? So it's just gonna sit right on there. And then we got some lock washers and some new nuts to put on our new T-bolts. So we're gonna go ahead and get that bolted down right now. Okay, our bracket's on there. See up here, got all our bolts tightened up. Now there's only four on this bracket, so don't forget about your bottom one under there. You need that other one tightened down too because that's part of your axle uh, flange. It's gonna seal that oil from coming out of there, okay? So all those babies are tight, and I mean, I'm all for power tools. I got this cool little Mac uh, 3 8 impact. It does a great job. I mean, it's fine. If you're going to run your bolts down with those, that's fine, but make sure you go back with a ratchet or a wrench and make sure it's tight. Those things, man, when the battery starts to wear on, we can't tell. I mean, it might only have 15 pounds, 15 foot-pounds of torque on there, and you're going down the road, man, and your caliper is going to fall off. So don't just run stuff down with an electric tool and say, oh, it's good. Make sure you hand check everything, okay? Or use a torque rancher and go back over them. So make sure you do that. I mean, electric tools are great. I love them. I use a lot of them. But I'll tell you, man, they, they're they not depend. I mean, dependable as far as torque rating goes. 
but they're a lot easier on your arms, no doubt, by far. So there's that one. So now we got to do our other bracket here, okay? Now this bracket right here is our number two bracket. This one right here, if you look at these four bolts, I'm going to flip this thing around this way. These four bolts match up with those four bolts, right? So what we're going to do is it's going to go on like this with a spacer. So we got these old spacers and these four bolts. So the bolts are going to go through here with a spacer and then that bracket behind it to mount our rotor or our caliper, sorry, our caliper. Caliper is going to go in these two holes right here. And then these four right here are going to have the spacers on our bracket. So let's knock that out real quick. Okay, guys, there's our brackets on there. You can see, let me lean up this way. You got bolt, spacer, lock washer, nut, all the way around. Four times, okay? So now that dude is bolted on there as well. So now we're ready to throw our rotor on. So we're gonna go ahead and throw a rotor on. As you can see, this has several holes in it because it works on a bunch of different cars, GM, Ford, and Mopar. So you just gotta find the right pattern and slip that baby right on there. Okay, we got a rotor on there. Make sure you grab a couple lug nuts and put them on there to hold your rotor because if you don't, things are gonna flop around when you go to put your caliper on. It's a headache, believe me. Put a couple lug nuts on there to hold the rotor. Make sure everything turns good. You know, you don't hear any funny noises or anything goofy going on in there. So everything's great with this. So now this is the time that you want to clean your brake rotor. So when they ship these, a lot of times they put a film on them uh, to keep them from rusting. And you want to take that off of uh, the mating surface with the brake pads. So I just got some brake cleaner here from Napa. I just take a nice clean uh, rag and spray it on there then hold it on the back there and wipe it get it all nice and clean and then clean your brake pads as well They put a piece of foam in there so you can slide that out so Your pads don't flop around in there. Sorry about that. Take that foam out of there Then you can clean your your brake pads as well. Okay before you put it on there All right, so let's clean her up Okay guys, so now we got our caliper here and these are marked left and right so you make sure you get the right one Got to always make sure the bleeder screw is pointed up in case you can't find the markings on it. Uh, so what you want to do is I just take a, a little center punch here and slide these, these bolts out because they're stuck in there holding the caliper together. And when you install this, you're going to slip, of course, the pads over on each side of the, the rotor here. So it's going to go on just like that. And then you're going to slide these pins from the bolts uh, into these holes right here on the bracket. Okay, at the same time because they're threaded Let me focus right there uh, To uh, thread into this bracket you can kind of see If I focus in there that that's threaded in there and that's where those are going to bolt right in there So that's what we're going to do right now is we're going to get that Caliper up onto the caliper bracket and over the rotor Okay, so what I did was I slid the caliper up there. You'll notice that inside pad is right here these little hooks right here the bolt goes right through there and that's what's going to hold those on so i just barely slipped the bolt through the bracket right there you can see the rest of it hanging out to hold it in place and what i'm going to do now is feed this shoe in or sorry this pad in it's not shoe dave's not drum brakes from the top and then that bolt will go right through that hook so you want to get that in first take that down there like so, if I can do that, close, getting a little closer, kind of wiggle around till we get it all the way down in there, okay? And then I'll show you what it looks like once you get it in there. Okay, so there it is. You can see the little notch in there is sitting on there. If I fall underneath, you can see the notches on the back of the, the caliper. They're kind of hooked in, and then you can see where that bolt's going to slide right through that there to hold that pad in place so now i'm going to run this all the way down and what will happen here is you want this end to go inside the pin okay like as a guide and then this will start threading into the bracket there on the back and focus that for you you want to make sure that you don't uh cross thread that okay so just take it real easy and run it in real gentle and kind of do both of them evenly at the same time to keep the 
the caliper centered, okay? Okay, you guys, there you go. She's tightened down, bolting everything up there. You can see the bottom one. Make sure your bleeder is on the top. Don't put your calipers on the wrong side. Make sure your bleeder's on the top. And if you look underneath here, you'll see that bolt with those copper washers right there. That is for your brake line. And as if, and if you look at the brake line, you'll see that this is a banjo style brake line. Deer, 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 But these work great. So and it's threaded, of course, on this end. Uh, so you put that in there. You put your washer, your bolt, you know, with the washer on it on one side. And then, of course, the washer on the other side. Stick it in there, and then it'll go up, and it'll thread it in this brake line. Now, if you're replacing your brake line, your rear axle brake line, uh, no matter who you get it from, like if inline tube built you one or, or classic tube, uh, tell them that you're running disc brakes on the back and what they'll do is they'll cut it short and they'll have the threaded end down here So then your line will be a lot cleaner uh, Going on to that, but if you're using your existing brake lines like this Just kind of bend it where it's not going to hit from the travel of the suspension or on your shocks and make sure your flex line uh, Runs up and has plenty of uh, of travel and and play on it And then of course right here you can see the hole right there. That's where our parking brake cable is going to go in and on these, these uh, early B bodies and, and E bodies as well, and A bodies, it doesn't matter. I mean, on these Mopars, you always have a longer parking brake cable on the passenger side of the car. Well, these guys gave you the two short brake cables in this kit, so you'd have to put a crossover and run a different uh, cable from your parking brake assembly. And if yours is broke, I mean, that would be great. I'd do it all new anyway. But this one right here actually worked pretty good. But uh, I'm going to take off this, this clip on the end there and make it into where I can put this along one on there and just reuse my original parking brake cables. But there you have it, man. Disc brakes on the back. Not too bad, not too hard. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. I'm sorry I had to pause and, uh, and kind of get back to it. Uh, but uh, I'm going to start using a GoPro here so I'll be able to actually show you some hands-on stuff. So you guys take care, and as always, you know, our videos are sponsored by DT Auto Brokers and, of course, Icebox Performance up there. See if I can get their logo where there's not a glare on it. But, hey, it was nice seeing you guys. Hopefully this video helped you out. Click it, like it, share it. Let me know what you want to see. Uh, I'll try to get you some videos of some cool stuff coming up. We got the 70 Charger right here. We're going to start hammering on. Uh, the 70 CUDA is just about done. I got a 71 CUDA. I got a 69 Roadrunner that we're building. So, uh, and a 67 Dodge Dart GT. So that one's coming back from paint. And we're going to start putting that one together. So be sure to leave your comments and let me know what you want to see. Take care, you guys.